man claims that the young woman he took camping in search of Bigfoot was abducted by Bigfoot and she was never seen or heard from again. But before we get started, welcome to True Crime with Maneater. If you love all things true crime, including missing person cases, cold cases, and just the strange happenings of the world, you've come to the right place. Be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss a video upload. Let's get started. Sixteen-year-old Teresa Ann Beer had a really rough upbringing. Her parents, Shirley and David, had not provided the best environment for her to be in. They were living in Fresno, California. Her mother, Shirley, was abusive to not only her, but her siblings. In one incident, Shirley had wrapped three-year-old Teresa's leg around one of the crib slats and twisted it until it broke. Social services would become involved and remove Teresa and her siblings from the home of her parents. So Teresa was in foster care for a few years, and that is until David divorced his wife, Shirley. David is Teresa's biological father, and he had remarried a woman named Margie. And hold on, because this is going to get confusing. Margie had been married to Shirley's half-brother, whose name was John Richmond. And she had two daughters from that marriage who now lived with her and Teresa's father, David. So David would decide that he's going to get custody of Teresa. I don't know if he tried for the other children, but I do know that he went and he fought a battle to get Teresa back from obviously foster care. Eventually, David would regain custody of Teresa and they moved to Southern California. Unfortunately, things wouldn't change for Teresa. Her stepmother, Margie, was not only abusive to her own daughters, but to Teresa. And eventually, Teresa just couldn't take it anymore and would move to her great-grandmother's home in Fresno. But her father, David, was not having it. He wanted her to come back home, but Teresa was done. She refused to come back and deal with all of the abuse she had been dealing with for her entire life. I mean, since she was an infant, she was dealing with this abuse. I'm not sure what happened to Teresa's mom, Shirley. It seems like there's such little information on this case for some reason. So after she returned to her great-grandmother's home, her uncle, John Richmond, who had been married to her stepmother at one point, decided that he wanted to take care of her. And unfortunately, he would soon gain custody of the girl. John was nicknamed Blind Johnny and he went by that. And he was a 42 year old man who claimed that he lost his eyesight playing Russian roulette. So for those of you who don't know what Russian roulette is, it's a very dangerous game where you load bullets into a revolver, but you don't put all the bullets in and you spin it and you close it and then you put the gun to your head and you pull the trigger. Obviously this game is fatal and nobody should ever try it. Although Blind Johnny had two daughters with his ex Margie, they stayed with his ex-wife. He didn't really want custody of them. He did nothing to really try to get custody of them. So it's strange that he wanted Teresa. But he had had two sons who he had with a sex worker. Everybody in this young girl's life just ignored the red flags because at the time Johnny had a 17 year old girlfriend named Tamara Newman who was living with him. Again, this is a 42 year old man who has a girlfriend who is 17. Obviously there's something wrong with that picture. Unfortunately, after Johnny got custody of Teresa, he would not only sexually abuse her, but he would allow his friends to do so as well. Oftentimes he would make her miss school to babysit his sons and to no one's surprise, she was doing terrible at school. At 16 years old, her teachers and those around her would describe her as immature and a slow learner. Of course, this makes me endlessly sad because she was living in one abusive environment after another. When children are in abusive environments, they can't focus on things like schoolwork. They're just focused on survival. Yet nobody stepped in to protect this young girl. On June 1st, 1987, Teresa had told her friends, Janice and Peggy, that she was going on a camping trip with a new friend of hers. She said that she was probably going to have to miss school, but they were going to go to the mountains and they were going to look for Bigfoot. This friend that Teresa had mentioned was a man named Russell Welch, but people would call him Skip. The thing about Skip is he was a 43 year old man and he didn't have the best track record. Not only was he obsessed with finding Bigfoot, but his wife had died of an overdose and he was an addict. He was very much addicted to meth and people would say that he was very talkative and he had all these colorful stories which probably explains why. Skip was a house painter, but mostly he survived off his disability checks. So on that morning of June 1st, 1987, Skip would go to Blind Johnny's home and Blind Johnny and Skip were apparently acquaintances and Teresa was getting ready for school as he stopped by and he said, okay, I'll take you to school. But we already know that Teresa was planning to skip school to go in the mountains with him 
to look for Bigfoot. Later in the day, Teresa's school would call and say Teresa never came to school, and Blind Johnny would just claim that she was sick that day. Blind Johnny would go around town and he would speak to a bunch of people and say, hey, do you know where Teresa is? She didn't go to school today. And they would say, no, but if she's with Skip, you should know that he's not a good person and you certainly should not be trusting her to be around him, which is quite ridiculous because also Johnny is not a trusting person. He is actually a terrible person. Eventually, Johnny would report Teresa missing to the police department. Skip and Teresa were already going to the Sierra Nevada mountain range to Shut Eye Peak area. And of course, authorities are involved and now they need to question everybody that's, you know, friends and family of Skip. And they would start by questioning a 17-year-old known as Michelle. The summer before this one, Michelle had gone with Skip to the mountains because she was completely enamored with his stories about Bigfoot and helping him find it. I'm not sure how true this other part is, but it is noted that Skip's daughter, Chandra, advised Michelle against going with her father. Apparently, his daughter knew that he liked to take young girls to the mountain and basically give them drugs so that they would have sex with him. Michelle would explain that it was a traumatic trip with Skip, that she believed she was drugged, but she was lucky that she made it home. And many people believe that the reason she made it home is because she took two of her male friends with her as a precaution. So I do want to note that I've been going over as much information as possible that I can find on this case. Like I'm telling you, there is no information out there. It's really hard to find really rock solid information. But I've noticed that some family members of Skip this man who went in the woods with a 16 year old girl and she never returned, do you comment on these posts defending their father? Um, so that's kind of a really interesting thing to consider because from what I've read, they did say that he would take these young girls to the forest to look for Bigfoot. I don't know, they would defend him as a decent person and I'm not sure that he is a decent or good person. And they very much do not believe that he had anything to do with whatever happened to Teresa. A little while later, I believe it was around June 10th, police were able to locate Skip. And he was at his mother's home in Fresno, California. And they did arrest him on a previous drunk driving violation. And I guess during questioning, investigators would note that he spoke very seriously about Bigfoot. Everything he said, he believed. He was very adamant that Bigfoot existed. And he was just very adamant that Bigfoot was real like he very much believed what he was telling everybody and himself and he would change his story about what happened to Teresa multiple times and i guess during the interview he wanted to call Teresa sam because that was the nickname he had given her again i have no idea why because Teresa sam i i mean i don't get the connection maybe there isn't one maybe he just liked the name i don't know but that's what he wanted to call her throughout the interview. So at first he said, okay, well, I dropped her off at school. Like I told Blind Johnny I was going to. And then he would say, okay, actually we did go to the mountains. So that's a first lie. Again, not great to be lying to police during an investigation because there's chances they already know the information they are asking you. And then he would claim that Teresa or Sam would run off with another woman or a bunch of campers and basically that she had run away on her own accord. And then he would say, well, we did see Bigfoot a few times and she was very excited about this. And then she ran away to find him. And then again, he would say, oh, well, she was abducted by Bigfoot. He kidnapped her. And basically he said, I doubt Teresa is going to come back because she's just going to be happier out there in the woods with Bigfoot. So obviously you're listening to this right now and you're like, this is completely absurd. And that was my first thought when I was hearing this, okay? I don't necessarily believe in Bigfoot. I'm not mocking those who do. It could be a thing. I don't research it. I don't get into it. Um, it's just not something I particularly care about. So as I did mention before, Skip did meth. That's not a secret. And meth is like a stimulant that rapidly increases your dopamine levels. And so if you do meth, obviously this can lead to a feeling of euphoria. Um, that's why often people like talk really fast or they're like really active and busy and running around. It's because of all that dopamine going to your brain and all those feel good chemicals suddenly bursting in you. Theoretically, if Skip did believe in Bigfoot and he very much was doing meth, he could very much believe that it was real. I mean, the way he was talking to investigators, investigators noted that he felt like Bigfoot was actually real. Like it wasn't just something he was saying. He believed it to his core. Obviously, when you do meth and you have that boost of like dopamine in your brain and then you come off of it, you're going to crash and you're going to be irritable. You're going to be depressed and it will permanently damage the brain cells that make dopamine, meaning you're going to have to continue to do meth 
to keep getting those feelings, to keep creating that dopamine. And then apparently in the interview, without being questioned about this in particular, Skip said, if you happen to find Teresa, there's not going to be any sign of sexual abuse. And that basically, although Teresa wanted a sexual relationship with Skip, he wasn't like that and it wasn't in his nature to take advantage of a 16-year-old girl, which from what I understand is very much not true. But Skip would take police to the area that he said him and Teresa were at. And when police arrived, they did find things that belonged to Teresa. They found her purse, some of her clothing. They brought bloodhounds, and the bloodhounds did pick up her scent, but they dropped it shortly after. They even brought in a helicopter. Teresa was nowhere to be found. So what happened to Teresa? Most people obviously believe that Skip killed Teresa. Whether he went up there and he did drugs and can't recall it, or maybe he went up there and he f did kill her and firmly believes that it was you know, Bigfoot who took her away, I don't know. But when this case, you know, obviously became a thing, everybody did firmly believe that Skip was the one to murder this girl and hide her body. But another theory would come to light. There were two serial killers known as the Speed Freak Killers, and Skip's family would say they're responsible for this. Basically, after they heard about these two men killing women, they kind of connected it to Teresa. And I did note that Skip's daughter at the time of Teresa going missing claimed that her father was a predator. And I did note that now today she's often defending him. And from what I can see, I have been on these posts, I don't know how real they are. So I just want to note that I don't know if this is actually his daughter defending him on certain posts or if it's just a person. I can't be sure of that. But on these posts, she says that her dad did, of course, have poor judgment. He should have been in the woods or the mountains with young girls, but he did not kill Teresa. But again, who did? I mean, they're saying the speed freak killers did, though I'm not sure police can make that connection. So Teresa ultimately went in the woods with a man who was 43 years old, who was known to do this to other girls, or at least one other girl. I don't know how much he did this. And then she never came back. So theoretically, I mean, we could say that he isn't guilty of murdering her. We could say that theoretically, maybe he made a sexual advancement at Teresa and she wasn't having it and she ran away and maybe was killed by the elements for being out there by herself. But again, some of her clothing and her purse were found. So if she wanted to get away, wouldn't she take her stuff if she wasn't in danger? Something about it obviously is very jarring. And of course, some people believe maybe Bigfoot did kidnap her because they were up there looking for Bigfoot. They supposedly saw Bigfoot. So she could have been kidnapped. I don't know. Skip was charged with child endangerment and child stealing, or I guess kidnapping in today's language. I don't know if they're different or not, but three days before his trial, authorities would drop the child stealing charge. And they offered a recommendation of a one year sentence if Skip signed a waiver, allowing them to go forward with a murder charge if Teresa's body was located. Of course, Skip was like, absolutely not. I'm not going to sign anything like that. And I mean, what person would? That's, that's ridiculous. I mean, no. So the prosecutor did the only logical thing in this situation. He had to drop the charges basically to avoid double jeopardy. So if they found Teresa's body, they could later charge him with the murder. So what double jeopardy is, is basically like if you go to trial for a murder and they find you not guilty, you cannot be charged again later down the line. So if you're accused of murder and you go through trial and people find you not guilty and you go out tomorrow and have a news conference and say, turns out I actually did kill this person, they can't charge you for that murder because you were already found not guilty. And believe it or not, there is a case like that. I believe it was a business man who killed his business partner. He went to trial. He was found not guilty. Um, and then I think in an interview, he was like, well, yeah, I killed him. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. It's bizarre, but... Again, the legal system is the way it is for a reason. Skip would die in 1998 at the age of 54 due to coronary artery disease. And he did do meth as mentioned, so that's not really surprising. But apparently Blind Johnny would talk to the Fresno Bee, which is a newspaper, and I can't seem to locate this article. So if you guys come across it, please send it my way. And during that conversation, he basically went on to say that he very much was close to his niece. And if she wasn't murdered, she was sold into slavery. He would die of cancer in 2008. And I just want to note that there is a theory that Blind Johnny had asked Skip to murder Teresa. And that's maybe because Blind Johnny had been sexually abusing her and letting his friends do the same. And maybe Teresa had threatened to tell somebody if it didn't stop, whatever the circumstances might be, because him and Skip were acquaintances. So there is a theory that perhaps Blind Johnny wanted to cover up his crimes 
and if he made Teresa go missing, that was the best way to do it. So I'd love to know your guys' thought on the case. Again, it's very messy. There's not a lot of detail about it from what I can find. I do want to find these old newspaper articles, but I'm having trouble locating them. So if you guys have this information or you can get your hands on it, please send it my way. I would love to read them. But that's it for today, guys. If you like this video or any other video on my channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on alerts so you never miss video upload. If there's a case you'd like me to cover, pop it in the comments below and I'll be sure to get to it. Check out some other videos on my channel while you wait for the next upload and I'll see you later.